I'm Carolyn. I'm going to tell you about this combinatorial theorem I proved that may already be known, but maybe not. So after the talk, if you already knew this theorem, you can come tell me about how you knew it. That would be great. OK, so as some of you know, I'm a mathematical fiber artist. And the story of this theorem is that I was looking at the online magazine Nitty, which Susan mentioned in her talk. And there was this contest to design an innovative piece with a Templeton square. So you can see a Templeton square, maybe. Yeah, there you go. You can see a Templeton square. So I knew some people would just make really big ones or really small ones or put them together in some way to make like a bag or something. So I wanted to do something different, you know. And uh, the, the deadline for the contest was like three days after I saw the thing. So I was like, oh, well, I'm not doing it for that. But you know how sometimes an idea just gets stuck in your brain and you're like, oh, OK, well, that's what I'm thinking about now. So anyway, um, so. I realized that I could reconceive of the Templeton Square as four Truchet tiles kind of stuck together. Right? So just to remind you, uh, here are Truchet tiles. And some people think there are four Truchet tiles, but secretly we all know there's really just one Truchet tile. They're just uh, rotated about. So um, Bob Bosch and Urchin Cully had come up with this idea of these flexible Truchet tiles where you take this point along the diagonal and you're pulling it to make them lighter or darker. And so I thought, well, maybe I could do that to actually change what these uh, Templeton squares looked like. So just to see what you can do with the flexible truchet tiles. Here are the pinwheel and bow tie tilings looking a little bit different with flexible truchet tiles. OK, so I wanted to do the same thing, but I was having some laciness going on. So I wanted to make my squares either lacy or less lacy. So here is the Templeton square knitting pattern. And you really only need to look at the right half of that. So you, this pattern is really repeated four times around to actually give you a square. And if you're just looking at the right half, what's going on, look at those, uh, the, orange, the orange line of, uh, of what the yarn over is really. It's making lace. And if you pulled that, that would change the laciness of the upper part. So that's my idea. And that's going to change the slope there. So I'm just looking at the right half of the pattern, and we're changing the pattern to have either more or not more lace above that current orange line of stitches. And that will change that slope. And when we're changing the slope, I still want to keep the pattern, the knitting pattern, as symmetric as possible, and just for aesthetic purposes. So here's, here's just so that you can look at what's going on. So this is for a smaller size pattern. Because when you make those Templeton squares, it takes like all day to make one that size, unless you're faster than I am. So anyway, uh, this is for one that's size 21 rounds. So uh, what you can see is when you're changing those, if you have size 21 rounds, um, there are basically five different uh, patterns that you can get there. So what we need to track is the number of stitches that we're going over from the red stitch to the top there. And then also how many rows that you have to get up. So n is the number of over stitches. And then k is the number of up rows. But I'm only counting the up rows that are interesting, the ones that have, oh, can you please stay on the slide? Thank you. So the, the number of up rows that I'm counting are only the lace ones. So we have n equals 4, k equals 4. Or then if you go uh, n equals 5, that's more over in the k equals 3. So what you can see is that n plus k is constant. And then what we're looking at, because we want those um, knitting patterns to be symmetric, we actually end up with palindromic partitions. So we end up with these partitions of n into k pieces that are palindromic. So that's what's going on mathematically. And so uh, what's interesting is for us, or what we need to note, is that we have, we're partitioning n into k pieces. So the number of ways to do that is n minus 1 choose k minus 1. But we actually want those to be palindromic partitions. So we, I have this lemma for how many ways to do that. But certainly that was known. Um, and so what you really want to do is basically divide n into 2 and then divide k into 2 and then make your partition and then just reflect that. And you know, if n is odd, then you just have to fix it, right? You're sort of fixing that. So there's a slide where you can just kind of see that visually. And so the theorem that I have here is counting those up. So the total number of palindromic partitions, 
when n plus k is fixed, and in this case that was always even, and n is at least half of it, as a Fibonacci number. So that's nice. And in the knitting situation that we have, it's every other Fibonacci number. And you saw that for one of the cases it was five, and so this, every other Fibonacci coming after five, the next one will be 13. <laughs> OK, so thank you very much. All the math in this talk and the pattern and oh, the pattern for this scarf and a lot more mathematical fiber arts will be available in the book, Figuring Fibers, and that should come out by the AMS uh, at the end of this year. So thank you very much.